Tonight we're going to read in the book, Tramp for the Lord, chapter 21. Where is heaven? Matthew 6, 20 and 21 is the scripture that we're going to read. And it says, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will be your heart also. Happiness is not dependent on happenings, but on a relationship in the happenings. My father taught this to me when I was just a child. He often told me of the early days of his marriage. He had opened a small jewelry watch store in a narrow house in the heart of the Jewish section of Amsterdam. Poor mother, she had dreamed of a home with a little garden. She loved beautiful things and spacious views. I love to see the sky, she often said. Instead, she found herself on a narrow street in a very old house, the kind with only a single room on each story, with worn-out furniture that they had had inherited from grandmother. Yet they were both happy, not because of the circumstances, but because of the relationships in the circumstances. There in Amsterdam, in the narrow street in the ghetto, they met many wonderful Jewish people, and they were allowed to participate in their Sabbaths and in their feast. They studied the Old Testament together, and on occasion even the New Testament. I have remembered many times the lessons I learned from my father about happiness and happenings, but never was it so clear as when I was in Korea many years later. I had been in the Orient for three months, spending much time in Korea. While there, I spoke in many meetings in schools, orphanages, children's homes, and churches. One day after I had spoken in a university, a theological student came to me. I had never seen such gloom on the face of a man who said he wanted to be a minister of the risen Christ. Why is it that you are so full of unhappiness? I asked. I've lost my way, he said sadly. When I first became a Christian, my pastor taught me the Bible is true. In those days I had great happiness, but now I am studying the famous scholar Rudolf Bultmann, who says our Bible is full of myths and fables. I have lost my way and no longer know where heaven is. I was angry. It did not seem right that the simple boys of Korea had to struggle through this horrible theology. They studied many hours at the universities, going to school twice as long as students in America. Yet, because of what they studied, they often lost their faith. I answered his question about heaven by telling him that I had just seen and heard the day before while driving through the countryside. I saw the poorest shack I had ever seen. It was a tiny lean-to made of materials collected from the garbage heap. Pieces of cardboard, tin cans, had been smashed flat, old boards. As we drove past, I heard a beautiful voice of a woman singing. Seldom, even in the concert halls of Europe, had I heard such a sweet voice. We stopped the car and listened, for it was like the song of a skylark. I asked the missionary who was traveling with me, Do you know that song? Yes, she said. It says, Where Jesus is, tis heaven there. Oh, how my heart leaped for joy as I heard this beautiful song coming from such a poor place. It is one thing to hear such a song in a dignified church, or pouring through the speakers of an expensive stereo set. But when when one hears it coming from the poorest shack 
in the midst of such poverty, then it means something else. I looked at the young theological student before me. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is within you, in Luke 17 and 21. Boltman is wrong, and Jesus is right. Heaven is not a myth or a a fairy tale. Heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. Theology in the hands of the Holy Ghost is a beautiful science, but in the hands of unbelievers, it is death. If you want to find where heaven is, get out of your stuffy classroom and go back into the countryside. Listen to the simple faith of those who read only the Bible and trust only in God, not in material things. What do they care if some theologian says that heaven is a fable? They have found Jesus, and where Jesus is, tis heaven there. Hallelujah. And this is the end of Where is Heaven? And dear reader, or listener, I should say, if you are reading along with me, but I'm sure it's mostly listeners listening to this. If you have not experienced heaven in your heart, I want to encourage you that the Bible says if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I'm going to pray for the listener tonight. So if you'll pray along with me. Father, I I thank you that you've made a way for us to have a foretaste of heaven in our hearts when we turn from our sins and we ask you to come in and change our hearts and our lives. I pray that your will would be done in the listener tonight, in myself tonight, and that you would help us, Lord, to know the height, the depth of your love and of your truth, and that we would be reflections of the joy that only heaven can bring in our hearts. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.